Hello there, welcome. I'm back with two new games for you today. And while both are quite interesting, there's one really insane one in here. Uh, which one you'll just have to wait and see. So first of all, we're playing against Kao. He can unfortunately set up an agility first turn. But it's fine, we draw into quite a bit of disruption here. We can go for... We can actually go for a bonds here, which we could activate. We would need to throw our stilettos under the bus for that, though. Mm. And it's hard to say whether that's worth it, because bonds can be used later on in the game to really get some tempo back. On the other hand, if we use it now, we can already push quite a bit of damage and maybe get a key card out of his hand here. Out of his deck, actually. Because if bonds have agony hit, we get to banish all copies of the card we choose out of his hand. Oh, that's hard. So sent packing is one option. Um, disruption actually is pretty annoying for us. Forces us to give up tempo. On the other hand, Savage Feast is quite a high value card. With, with agility, he'll always get a claw hit out of that. So I think I'm just going to get that out. Also check his grave for... A stack rather for what he's playing. Um, only one reckless swing here. And then also the command and conquer. Um, of course there was the risk for him. Or for us rather. That he puts the scowling flashback onto this first attack. But to be honest. Then it, that's okay. At one point this is just bound to happen. Okay and now there's only the beast within that he uses to send the command and conquer. Unfortunately for us, though, not a great follow-up hand here. And while this does happen on new, it's not super common. Uh, what I'm thinking here is just block with his Envenomous Bite. Actually, no, we have to block with even a third card here. What is it? Siren's Call or Command and Conquer? Siren's Call is super huge in that matchup. Um, it lets you look into the opponent's hand and pick a blue card. And more often than not, you'll... Get rid of Kaios blue card and then his turn is really crap. So I'm keeping this here. And then we just draw into a, an insane hand. If that was our follow-up hand to the first first play with it, that, that just would have been insane. But now we can play Desires of Mind. Give it go again with the Transcend card. Transcend. Make them banish. And then play the Siren's Call. Or rather we first play the Siren's Call. Get the blue card out of the hand if they have one then make them banish with the mask and if they actually have a blue card which to be fair they should um then we also get the draw and the and the life gain from from out of desire mind here so really neat combo there with the siren's call So yeah, go again with the transcend card there. I think I want to put yeah the looking for scrap under the deck, so that if the game if the game should go late, we at one point can just keep pushing tempo. Uh, yeah, now it's quite important to play the siren call first. And let's see, do we get the blue? Do we get the blue? Oof. Okay. Um. Well, unfortunately, the blue card he had uh, was an instant that he could throw under the bus. So, um, well, it's still not a bad turn, you know. He Kai will sort of skip his, and we can push some damage. We're still even, and just in a second, we'll be ahead on life. But yeah, not not ideal though. And we don't banish a, a blue card either from the deck. So now it's just. Fortunately, I was sort of speculating on the on getting the blue card into the banish as well there. So we could have used Nu's ability to play it. Um, swing big on top. Okay, that's fine. So we just keep the leave no witness. Um, yet, as, so while I think this play is still fine, um, there was the potential to just really high roll. We could have uh, drawn a card and get a blue card in the banish zone and then at least we would have played that, that blue card for five out of the, the banish. Gained a life, if not more. Okay, with that hand, what can we do here? Unfortunately, the Leave No Witnesses 
don't come at the perfect uh, point here because Kale keeps not having an arsenal. But arsenal in codex ain't too bad. And now we banish our first blue card. Okay. Kayo answering with a blood rush though. Our hand once again not nothing too great crazy here. I think it's just full block out duty and then we can play the codex which is still fine. Codex alone is at least like a six value play. With leave no witness actually seven and uh, it, it just gets can get insane so we only leak for damage that's whatever we get to play the codex. Well now of course they do have an arsenal but that's fine. Uh, yeah, no, I did want to play that Codex there. Did not mean to skip the turn. So Kayo sort of wants to keep his armor for these turns. Oh, interesting, getting the Reckless Swing out. Um, actually, were there two Reckless Swings? I can't recall right now. I, I, I just know that in the game I, I was aware how many. Um, so Kayo wants to sort of keep his armor for the moments where he has really has a great hand or there's there really is some disruption he does want, not want to face. So for example is there, if there's a blood rush in the hand and I'm coming in with a bonds of agony. So he really wants to keep this blood rush in his deck then and not, not let me banish all the copies. Also for just getting tempo back later on. The armor is really great if I'm maybe on the forefoot and presenting disruption and damage he can just put that armor in there at some point and then maybe force me to block cards if we're both low. Okay next hand sort of okay we can get rid of that uh, well awkward warmongers in the in the um, arsenal there. Unfortunately, Kayo blocking just exactly enough to negate our Leave No Witness buff. Now our question becomes, what do we want to sync with that with that transcend card here? Is one she enough? Hmm. So we definitely want to play his. And then probably the uh, Arsenal, the um the looking for scrap afterwards. Yep, that sounds quite good. So we get the uh, Lethal Witness over the top anyways. Get rid of his arsenal, push some damage again, get rid of these, this awkward Warmongers. That could have been a better card, I'm not going to lie to you. And now we have quite a nice two card play here. Scrap into Cincy. Um, Well, the problem just becomes that if Kayo is smart and he yeah appeared to be quite a good player. He does not arsenal that card. And it was not a red either, so he can just throw the claw. And that scene still will just be vanilla damage. Still 3 card 11, not too bad. Okay, now we get that scrolling flashback and get quite lucky in, in that it doesn't deny us much. But yeah, that, that disruption just really didn't land this game. That's kind of annoying. You can see though that if just like he had one card less at, at some point, like if some disruption was was correct, um the, the correct one the correct one in the in the moment, then they just sent actually like maybe a swing big less, and that's then we're on 20 and not on 12. So yeah, that happens though, but we're not counted out yet. Assassin uh, popularly very good at low HPs. Hmm. And now, activating that bonds becomes a nuisance. We do, we can do so by by flicking something with the knives. We could go for bonds, a transcend card, then play the just the the mask, and the flick knives. In that case, I think I just block with the the codex here. Or do I? Let's see. And I also have a blue um 
transcended card left, which we could use for news ability. No, actually, we don't have the go again. So that, that would just go into a digger. Oof. Well, now that's unfortunate. Now we're in a life total where we just are not allowed to keep our hand. And now it becomes even a, even more um, complicated. If we would have... We, we obviously want to play that once. Um, in that case, we can only block with the Codex and the Spring Tunic there, though. And then we are exactly that, so we can't play that, unfortunately. And then Bonds will just not become the play, because it's, we don't have three attack rates for it. So might as well block with it, I guess. Uh, we can do go down to two. The second reckless swing was just pitched. And then we'll see. Is there something useful in there? Doesn't really matter at this point. We shouldn't go for the rough shot though. Because that we can only play if we've discarded something. Yeah, okay. We can go for the transcend. Um, now we could... In hindsight, it might have been correct to go new attack and then... I'd react with the mask to for sure get a card of him. We are also using the flick knives here to flick the mist blade into his face, so for sure we can play two blue attacks out of his grave now. And now, well, let's see. At this point, it's not un unwinnable. Um, they, he's at two. They are two, the Kayo. And we have the Flick Nest left, so basically said one. We could have we could still flicked the Scape Healer into his face. We just need to push one more damage in, and we are an Assassin. We have lots of attack reacts. That's not impossible, <laughs> but unfortunately, they do have the um, Blood Rush, and we do have the two non-blocks here. Which makes that really awkward, and I think uh, that's all she. Okay, and of course, there's also the, the palping here, so. Not ideal, not ideal. Could have been better, but. Uh, that happens. So, um, I think we're just off to the next one, and well, I, I've promised the next one might just be a banger. And the next one is against Enigma. That should just not be a favorite matchup for an assassin. And indeed, um, Enigma should have an easier time winning this. Though, we're not without weapons either. We have Wembrace, we have the pick to pieces. It can be quite annoying for Enigma as well. Um, but yeah, clearing Spectra Auras, for example, really, really not easy. Okay. But now, um, in opposite to the Kayo match, we now have an easy access to attack reacts with the Wembrace. So those Bonds of Agony will get quite annoying for Enigma. He can already turn it on now. Go for a slither here. Now this is coming in for 8. We still have that one floating this turn um, for the Vembrace. Yeah, unfortunately with an unmovable. So there's one still going over the top. That would kill the... That would kill the ward um, if we use the Vembrace. It would actually... He, he'd still have to put the Vaining Vengeance in front. Because what Vembrace does is it says the next prevention effect prevents one less and ward is prevent. So if he just wants to use ward one, he actually uses ward zero there and the hands would just get destroyed without doing anything. Does have to hold the line though to cover it up completely. But the nice thing about Vembrace is the prevention effect uh, keeps on going. And uh, the non-prevention that is. And we also have that Fang Strike left. So now still he has to get rid of the Vaining Vengeance. A uh, little mistake by him here in the sequencing. He needs to click the Vending Vengeance first. So it pre prevents the basically two damage we present here. Now with Shimmers, unfortunately, Spectra Shit coming in for two. Nothing we can do here really. Um, our hand is quite good. We can go for N Levels of Enlightenment, Dagger, and then the Prognosis. And also use the Mask if I'm not... I'm not wrong here. 
a little mis misconception at this point for me. I um, was still in the Enigma mindset and was like, wait, why can't I use the mask? But um, of course, it's an attack react, so we can't just use it whenever. So the levels of enlightenment are just coming in for three go again here. Now getting a block and uh, forcing another card from hand. Very nice. And then I, I think at this point, yeah, I'd rather... The prognosis would just get the Spectra Shield, so I'd rather just get use it again, get rid of this, this Spectra. Um, Enigma can answer back quite nicely here. Oh, actually, the Red Spectre doesn't get an action point if it's if he still has that aura, so it's whatever. Enigma decides to not play it at all. Uh, we fortunately do have some go against sources here, which is very nice. To be fair though, at this point, I should probably just keep a card in Arsenal, because all we do now is threaten damage, and that's not what the aim is against Enigma necessarily. You're more so looking to threaten damage whenever they um, threaten you with a big board. Right. Um, also, actually, I do go for that anyways, um, so just should have gone for the 7 attack East strike there, I believe. Hmm. Metamorph, that's just vanilla damage, but it's also just a random aura, to be honest. And again, no blue cards, so this hand is kind of awkward. It can just be looking for scrap and leave no witness just for the damage. It's a two card nine. Can't complain about that. Yeah, very grindy game against Enigma, but at some point. Um, you'll get through there. And they basically are looking to win off of their combo turn, so don't get too low till they fire that off, and then you just need to accept that you will eat some damage. Um, but as long as you're ready with enough uh, damage to threaten the board back and actually can clear that, then you're just totally fine. Okay. And another, like, interesting thing to mention here they did not bought us out the, their levels of enlightenment for example so we will probably have some nice cards to play later on in the game again we could go for a three card 11 here which isn't bad and then we can either arsenal just a nick or the venomous bite but the nick doesn't have an arsenal so cnc again just becomes vanilla damage which is a little annoying And the other play would just be to push some damage here. Oh, well, throwing those in here isn't ideal. They will get destroyed if they defend an attack with six or more power. And clearly I have more than enough ways to buff those quite highly. Uh, do I just keep this? Yeah, see, the, uh, of course I could have pushed like three damage more with the Venomous Bite. Um, once again, I value the option to just have those um, attack reacts in case they drop a uh, important aura. And they in fact do. They play the Spectre Sheet with three counters from Manifestations and then put an Astra etch Etchings on that, so it will be quite important for us to get rid of this now. Otherwise, we'll just face a zero cost uh, seven each turn now. Ooh, unfortunately for us, it seems like Enigma did not have a good hand to defend this. So we get rid of this instantly. And can threaten quite a bit of damage now, even get rid of their arsenal, get a silver for us. And now Enigma actually got quite low all of a sudden. All that just to get us back with a mirror guy, but I can see how Enigma says she can't really defend with those cards in hand. Mm, but now we kind of need to get rid of those. Can go for a surgical with his into CNC. I think that's the best we got right now. And we could even put a dagger in between that. Um, yeah, it's important that we have the damage now and that arsenal um, to really play that five card hand. Otherwise, if Enigma can just keep 
one card in hand and her auras, it's just eight damage every turn with one card. What do we start off with though? Is it the is it the dagger? Or is it the surgical extraction? Hmm. Actually, yeah. See, if we don't go for, for his as the go again, um, giver, but we use our um, shoes here, can come in with, I believe, both daggers now. And most more importantly for me, um, get both transcends. Have something floating for the Vembrace as well. Now Enigma decides she has a good board now. She really wants to push her advantage and goes for the headpiece here. boots and I think I've I'm doing a critical error here in using that my headpiece as a reaction I'm um, sure I can now maybe force a card from hand and then play the CNC to uh, with with rather good chances get rid of some of their board the problem becomes that if Enigma has instances in their hand they just really get a card advantage out of this and I could have, instead of pitching for that mask, gone for... I have three more resources, so I've actually had the resources to pitch into a Vembrace and a Dagger, as well as a CNC. Uh, which, in retrospect, might have been the better play here. Because there really isn't a good way for... Yeah, so now they actually do have the instances. That becomes quite annoying. And they wouldn't have had a good way to block out the Dagger. And this CNC would have sort of come in for seven, you could say, with the Vam race. So yeah, I'm not. I did not think that that play through here. We might be in a mm, an, an unfortunate situa situation now, especially since we did not draw a great hand to come back at them. Uh, trying to have to filter here for something better doesn't really happen. It's still gonna be a dagger and the pick to pieces. Um, at least we get a better arsenal, I guess. Um, so, of course, we still threaten, like, I believe, this pick to pieces for six here. Um, unfortunately, they do block it out for three, and we can't really go over that, so they will keep that, that board. And yeah, I might have thrown the game there a bit. Uh, what, we're not counted out yet. We do draw into some go against sources here, so maybe we can go over the top now. Yeah, those 10 really that really kind of hurt. Oh, and now a, even a Restless Coalescence to go with that. Well, okay. Um, so Enigma clearly made a mistake here. She could have put all the plus one counters onto the cat, and then come in with, I think, five damage more, so we would have had to give her one of our cards, which would have been fine though. I think the Justin won't be more than a, a tool to bluff here. Um, again, threatening that buff of four out of even five. Oops, I did not mean to do it this way. Of course, I don't do want to pitch into the into the Vembrace here. Um, so that would not. I wouldn't mind this. Yeah. I don't know, maybe Enigma does not have block in her hand. Maybe um, not enough to prevent a attack react here. Oh, or maybe she does. Ah, she does not, okay. And now... Yeah, she does not. She only had the, that ray block there. And she kind of thought, I guess, we could have... Yeah, we actually did buff that to four, so not the wrong call here for her necessarily. Now our hand become could become quite an insane play here. To be fair, it might just be exactly what we needed that a sequence of draws, um, because we are able to play the levels with two modes here: flip the undercurrent desires and then play out of um their their banish zone. And the current desires will allow us to banish two of their graveyard cards. And uh, well, 
we saw that levels of enlightenment earlier uh, that could just get us the game back here uh, let's let's see what what will happen we also have a few uh, modes of go again to give to our cards here yeah there's actually quite a bit of of goodies in that banner so we we will play this turn okay so first of all draw off the levels play the slither on that then we now have all that banner zone to play and all of those have basically natural go again now because of their yeah, card effects and we even draw another card just taking three that's fine and we come in with another five two times this card is has go again as soon as we transcend it in the turn so now we are forcing blocks it's quite a nice change of tempo change of pace and with the attack rig we might just kill them right here now oh, they do have the vaining vengeance to still keep alive And uh, now we can slither our CNC, so it's a CNC with go again. Uh, nothing special, really. <laughs> and we could also buff it to seven. Ah, uh, yeah, quite insane. Yeah, um, I guess it's just the perfect, perfect way to end that, that new game here. Just go to one, and then you have your pop-off turn and use all that enemy goody stuff against them. Really um, let them taste their own medicine there. Nice, and even if that doesn't kill them... <laughs> He could like play that codex afterwards, right? So that's quite crazy. Um, wow. Nu is a quite a fun hero. So yeah, what a fun game. And I've played more Nu um over the last few days. And I've played the other MST heroes as well. So especially um yesterday's Enigma games were quite exciting. Please take a look at that and then I'll see you there.